Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of the Dan Dawson Show. As you can see, I'm all dripping wet. Had to go out and check the cows. Really rainy and kind of cold down here in Texas. Um, just walked in the house, saw this, and figured out I need to put it up. But this is uh, Senator Ted Cruz. <laughs> God, I love this guy for all his mistakes, for everything he gets wrong. Hey, he gets some stuff right. And these are questions that a lot of people are asking about uh, the January 6th riot and about this Ray Epps guy. And we really need to be asking those questions. Did the FBI implant this? And, you know, I've, I've done this video before <clears throat> or a version of this video. Where it's like Trump was set up and didn't realize he was walking into a trap and ego does that to you. It happens. But this one. This one is gold because Ted Cruz goes directly at them. And what you're going to see in this video is a lot of, well, I can't answer that. I don't know. Well, I can't answer that. I can't answer. And that means yes. And um, having worked with these type of agencies before, when they say shit like that, it means yes. It means, yeah, yeah, we knew. Yeah, we did it. But we're not going to admit to it. And there's nothing you can do about it. But let's go ahead and take a look and, and uh, see what's happening. This is uh, ridiculous. Let's get to it. Thank you, Senator Rumafel, Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Olson, how many people have been charged with crimes of violence in connection with the events on January 6th? Senator, I'm not sure exactly how many uh, have been charged with crimes of violence. I know that there are okay. many. How, how many have been charged with nonviolent crimes? I don't have the numbers of people charged, whether at the state or federal level. I know that. Okay. There how many people are currently incarcerated concerning the events of January 6th? I don't know the number of people incarcerated. Again, I know that. I, I how many have, people have, okay, let me ask you that. Look, we have limited time, so I don't want you to filibuster. You either know the answer or you don't. How many people have been placed in solitary confinement concerning the events of January 6th? I don't have any information about that, Senator. You know, Mr. Olson, I will say it was sad. Senator Lee just asked you about this. Back in June of 2021, Senator Lee and I and two other senators sent a letter to the Department of Justice asking these questions, asking about the differential prosecutions. Let me ask you, during 2020, Black Lives Matter and Antifa riots all across the country, there were over 700 police officers injured by Black Lives Matter and Antifa riots. How many people have been charged with crimes of violence concerning those riots all across the country? I don't have information on how many, I, I would say, you know, hundreds of people have been charged as, as Ms. You, you, you would say, but, but you don't know. You know, when we asked you why the Biden Department of Justice has such wildly disparate standards going after January 6th, targeting some people who committed crimes of violence and anyone who commits a crimes of, of violence should be prosecuted, but also targeting a lot of nonviolent individuals. We asked you, why is it that you won't target the rioters and terrorists who firebomb cities across this country? The answer we got from the Department of Justice was shameful. On October 22nd, you came back and said, quote, the department has dedicated investigative and prosecutorial resources commensurate with the significance of these events. By significance, I guess it means the political benefit to the Biden White House. And I will tell you, there are a great many Americans who are understandably deeply concerned about the politicization of the Department of Justice under President Joe Biden. It has been 218 days since we sent you that letter. DOJ refused to answer the letter today when Senator Lee and I asked you about it. Your answer to every damn question is, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You're under oath. You may believe at the Department of Justice that you are unaccountable to the American people, but that is not the case. And the wildly disparate standards are unacceptable. Ms. Sandberg, I want to turn to the FBI. How many FBI agents or confidential informants actively participated in the events of January 6th? 
Sir, I'm sure you can appreciate that I can't go into the specifics of sources and methods. Uh, Did any FBI agents FBI or agents confidential or informants confidential actively participate in the events of January 6th? Yes, yes or no? Yes or no? Sir, I can't, I can't answer that. Did any FBI agents or confidential informants commit crimes of violence on January 6th? I can't answer that, sir. Did any FBI agents or FBI informants actively encourage and incite crimes of violence on January 6th? Sir, I can't answer that. Ms. Sadburn, who is Ray Epps? I'm aware of the individual, sir. Uh, I don't have the specific background to him. Well, there are a lot of people who are understandably very concerned, concerned about Mr. Epps. About Mr. Epps. On the night of January 5th, 2021, Epps wandered around the crowd that had gathered. And there's video out there of him chanting, tomorrow, we need to get into the Capitol, into the Capitol. This was strange behavior, so strange that the crowd began chanting, fed, 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 fed. Ms. Sandburn, was Ray Epps a fed? Sir, I cannot answer that question. The next day, the next day, on January 6th, Mr. Epps is seen whispering to a person, and five seconds later, five seconds after he's whispering to a person, that same person begins to forcibly tear down the barricades. Did Mr. Epps urge them to tear down the barricades? Sir, Similar to the other answers, I cannot answer that. Shortly thereafter, the FBI put out a public post listing, seeking information on individuals connected with violent crimes on January 6th. Among those individuals in the bottom there is Mr. Epps. The FBI publicly asked for information, identifying, offering cash rewards leading to information, leading to, for information leading to the arrest. This was posted and then sometime later, Magically, Mr. Epps disappeared from the public posting. According to public records, Mr. Epps has not been charged with anything. No one's explained why a person videoed urging people to go to the Capitol, a person whose conduct was so suspect the crowd believed he was a Fed, would magically disappear from the list of people the FBI was looking at. Ms. Sandburn, a lot of Americans are concerned that the federal government deliberately encourage illegal and violent conduct on January 6th. My question to you, and this is, a, this is not an ordinary law enforcement question, this is a question of a public accountability. Did federal agents or those in service of federal agent actively encourage violent and criminal conduct on January 6th? Not to my knowledge, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. I mean, one of the things I love about Ted Cruz is the senator goes in hard and he's asking questions a lot of Americans have asked. I've seen it on Joe Rogan. I've seen it on Tim Pool. I've seen it on all these shows, right? Did the feds do this? And I would say yes, because this is how, for all of you who've never left the country and don't get it, this is how we conduct warfare in other countries. It's right out of our playbook. I've, I've been to several um, countries, several combat zones. This is exactly how we do it. Now, our government's not always right. I'll, I'll give them that. But this is especially heinous because it's keeping the leftists in power. Is really to the point of being ridiculous, but it's keeping the leftists in power. And this is what they want to do, and this is what they're going to do. So how do we fix it? We expose it and say, hey, we understand what's going on. Because now, take advantage, because you have all these combat veterans who've done this, done it, seen it, knows how, we know how it works. That's why you will find so many veterans on the opposite side of Democrats, because we realize what's going on. We've seen it. We've seen it, we've done it. 
We've done it at the behest of our own government in other countries, Haiti, Bosnia, Kosovo, Afghanistan, Kabul, Iraq, Iran. We've done it. This is, this is what we do. And we recognize what's going on. I'm trying to tell you, this is what's going on. And that's why you have, you very rarely find a veteran unless they work pack or they were a cook or something like that. And they just didn't really go into combat zones and do this type of thing, right? They were in the office somewhere that don't recognize what's going on. We recognize what's going on. We see it because we've done it at the behest of our own government. To see it on our own soil, it's like, I recognize this, I see this. And it's really hurtful and embarrassing. You do things, but chickens come home to roost. The only problem this time is when they started doing this, right? Because I, I honestly believe Trump, Trump made them amp everything up. So instead of taking their time over 10 years, Trump came in, disrupted the system for four years. They have to do it now. It has to be done. So now they're hurrying up and doing it and they're making a lot of mistakes. When you rush, you make mistakes. One of the things we uh, say in um, special operations is a slow hit is better than a fast miss. Right now they're doing fast misses. They've been wrong on the COVID thing. They've been wrong on it. Go consult your doctor. I'm not going to give you any medical advice. <clears throat> They've been wrong on taxes. They've been wrong on American energy. Hell, California just the other day said, hey, stop charging your electric cars because you're bringing down the power grid. They've been wrong on so much because they're rushing. Because now with somebody like Trump still looming out there, and it's very important that Trump remains in the conversation because he's a threat. He's a threat to the system. And now that he's been in for four years, he's going to have four years to think about what he should have done differently. And if he does come back, if he does run, he's going to be a disrupting force again. And even if he doesn't, if he advises DeSantis, because Trump moved his home to Florida. So don't think those two aren't talking. Trump might not even run in 2024. It might be DeSantis. But Trump's in his ear and Trump's telling him, hey, this is what's going on there. And you, the American people, can see with these vaccine mandates that people are, are rebelling against and rioting in the street, protesting in the street because nothing's been burned down yet. But we'll get there. Trust me. Uh, 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 about your First Amendment rights, not only YouTube shutting stuff down, not only YouTube shutting stuff down, but Nancy Pelosi calling on these major tech corporations, Facebook, YouTube, to, to stop your First Amendment rights. You can't say what you want to say. That's one of the hallmarks of America. The right to self-defense. They're trying to take your Second Amendment rights. That's one of the hallmarks of America. That's why I say that's so important. So it's very important that we go after the FBI. Yeah, you messed up. Yeah, we got you now. NSA, CIA, whoever, right? And if you look, the lines are shifting. The lines are shifting. If you look at the beginning of Antifa and BLM, <clears throat> they were going after the federal government. Now they're supporters of the federal government. And us on the right frame of thinking are going after the federal government. Like, no, we want answers. We want answers. We want to know what's what. And that's what Ted Cruz is saying here. And I appreciate him. Hey, go get it, I say. But um, I just wanted to put that out there and, and show you my second <laughs> hearing video today. And there's probably going to be a lot more about what's really going on in the country. You have to see this stuff. This stuff is important. This stuff is important. It doesn't matter what the view says. It doesn't matter what's on your favorite TV show. It doesn't even matter who wins the Super Bowl, even if it's the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm a diehard Cowboys fan. It doesn't matter. This matters because this is going to affect your life today, tomorrow, a year from now, 10 years from now. It's going to affect your children's life, their kids. So we really have to keep on top of this and it's all open to us. So we should, you know, get on it. But uh, like, subscribe, share. I hope you enjoyed this video, but like, subscribe, share. As always, especially in these days and times, keep your paddle dry and do what you got to do.